Well, hello, welcome everyone. So wonderful to be here with you. I, um, I'm not Eve, I'm, I'm here in, <laughs> uh, so that's, yes, um, but Eve is a great friend of mine and I'm so, so thrilled and honored to be here in her place. Um, Eve and I, we have been crossing paths and kind of in each other's orbit for a really long time. Um, and I mentioned this, I was here in June, so I mentioned the same story. So if you were here, you, this will be a little bit of a repeat, but we had both taught different programs at Esalen and we kept on running into each other and it felt like this kind of cosmic coming together and we finally have started to come together to to collaborate in different ways we just um recently were the mindfulness teachers for a climate resilience course at UCSF and um so we were collaborated in that way and that's how this came about here so um I am just really thrilled to be here with you and thrilled to know Eve and um feel really honored that she trusts me to come and be um, holding this community. Um, so, so yeah, thank you for being here. Um, so my understanding is that some of the topics that you have been exploring are this kind of clear, clear like mind awareness, this, this kind of pure awareness, pure presence, and also compassion. You've been reading a particular text in exploring these topics. And so I'm gonna kind of continue on that thread. Part of what I bring to the table is that I have deeply studied yoga philosophical traditions, and I also study Buddhist philosophical traditions. And so I'm really always interested in seeing where the connections are between the two traditions and how one kind of influences the other over a historical period and you know how they kind of speak about common things and common themes so as i was preparing for for being here with you this evening um, I, I was thinking about three main threads that we'll explore with the overarching topics of this this clear like pure awareness and also how that relates to compassion. Um, so we'll be exploring these topics through relationality, in a sense. Relationality between these two traditions of yoga philosophy and Buddhist philosophy. Uh, relationality between the kind of relative sort of consciousness and through more of the supreme consciousness, you might call it. The relationship, the relativity of things like, you know, how we connect with with human experience and and common humanity right how we have a unique individual experience but how that can be echoed throughout and and can be understood by others that we have this kind of commonality amongst us with with human experience um, so we'll start this evening with with a, a practice and this practice is actually going to be a little bit of a call and response chant. It's very brief, but it connects us with this idea, the sentiment of kind of invoking our time here together this evening with connecting with that idea of common humanity, that we are in this together and that we in being human and having the full range of human experience can come to a greater understanding of ourselves and a deeper connection with one another. So it's about common humanity and about compassion. This is a traditional chant that is in Sanskrit and it's very common in the yogic tradition. It is, the Sanskrit words are loka, samasta, sukhino, bhavantu. And what this essentially means is may all beings everywhere be free, free of suffering, May they be filled with happiness and joy. And may all of the actions in my own life contribute to that happiness, that joy, that freedom from suffering for all. So it's very metta in, in its kind of orientation. It's very oriented toward compassion. So I'll ask us first to repeat the Sanskrit words, and then I'm gonna grab my harmonium and we'll do a brief little call and response chant to invoke our time together. So repeat after me, loka. Wonderful, samasta. Great, sukhino. Great, bhavantu. 
Wonderful. Let's do one more time. Loka. Samasta. Sukhino. Bhavantu. Great. So that's it. And we'll do it just in that way. So even in singing, I'll sing and then we'll respond. And so it'll be back and forth this way. So come into a comfortable seated position, maybe sitting on the edge of their chair if that feels comfortable enough. The aim is to feel like you can breathe deeply. You have full access to the power of your breath to be able to, to do this chant. And just know that all of the practices that I guide you through are completely optional. So if you want to engage by listening to this, that is also a great way to do this practice. Okay, so starting with breathing. As you hear my harmonium come in. It's taking a few deep, steady breaths. I'll guide you through the whole time. So if it feels good to close your eyes, you can close your eyes. You could even soften your gaze if that feels better. And simply arriving in this place, in this spot, on this day, with your breath, with all of you, blessing and invoking our time together, acknowledging our common humanity, and how knowing that we're in this together can help us develop compassion for ourselves and for one another. And we'll begin the chant. Loka, Loka, Samasta, Samasta, Sukhino, Sukhino, Bhavantu, Bhavantu, Loka, Loka, Samasta, Samasta, Sukhino, Sukhino, Bhavantu, Bhavantu. Okay, I think we've got it. So let's sing it in unison three times all the way together. Inhale deeply. Exhale, empty out completely. <sighs> okay, so all together. One time with each of the phrases. Inhale. Loka. Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu We'll end with one more phrase, offering peace. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. And let's chant it together. Inhale deeply. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Spending a few moments to allow our invocation, this short practice to start. Land, land in the room. Land amongst one another. Land inside our own bodies. Continue to reverberate and saturate.
the space that we create together. May it be so. May all beings be happy, free from suffering, and may our work together contribute to that. And if your eyes have been closed for this invocation, I invite you to open them gently, slowly. We'll come back for a little bit of conversation and then more practice. Okay. So, you've been making your way through the Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life by Bodhisattva Sattva Shantideva. Um, and I'm going to start out with a, a quote from, from that book, um, from this kind of practical guide that has been created to, to really bring the Buddhist practices into your daily life. Um, I really resonate with that and love that. I'm very much about making these these sorts of teachings, philosophical teachings relevant to our lives, right? That's when it really starts to make a difference and starts to be impactful. Um, so as, read, as I was reading through this book, I was saying, ah, oh, yes, this is everything that, that, I, that I love about um, this practice. Um, so this little passage, forms that we see directly are just mere appearance to mind. They exist falsely because the way they appear does not correspond to the way they exist. Just as a human body is conventionally accepted as clean when in reality it is impure. Buddha taught the impermanence of things to lead people gradually to a realization of emptiness, the lack of inherent existence of things. Then it is incorrect to say that things exist even conventionally. So what does, what does this mean? So this to me, it means that, you know, it takes me back to a lot of the connection of a concept of the layers of being, the kind of subtle layers of, of being, this kind of energy body that is described in both the yogic tradition and described in the Buddhist tradition that part of the practice and a big focus of the practice is to traverse through all of these different layers of consciousness, these different layers of our energetic being so that we can come to this, this connection with, with pure awareness, with this clear light awareness that we're talking about. Like the aim is to peel back those layers and really come to the gem of this pure awareness. And so, this in saying that, you know, these exist falsely, that they're just mere appearance to the mind, that, that we can peel back these layers and understand them being in communication with and relationship with them, but realize that it's kind of illusion, right? That it's just another form of that pure consciousness is really kind of what the aim is of a lot of these practices, at least as is said. Um, this also shows up in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. That there's this whole system of examining this and looking at all of the different layers of being. Um, and there's kind of a different form within the Buddhist tradition. But what we'll do is we'll look at these layers of being from Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, from, from the yogic tradition, to try to kind of understand what this might mean for our lives. So the, these are called the koshas these five subtle body layers per se and the it's kind of like an onion we have the outermost layer and then there's a layer inside and there's a layer inside of that so there's five layers that surround this kind of pure consciousness this clear light awareness and the aim of the practice done over a long period of time is to certainly come into acceptance and awareness of these different layers of consciousness, but also to transcend them, to move and understand all of those layers, to get to that pearl, to get to the jewel at the center that is that pure awareness, pure consciousness. So these layers are, so 
Anamaya Kosha. Anamaya Kosha is the, it's literally translates as food body. Food body. Can anybody guess what that, that might mean? Food body. What might be like the most like physical, like gross manifestation of being? The digestive system? Yeah, yeah. Which is a part of the the physical body, like the food body, the physical body, anamaya kosha. And then the more subtle layer underneath that. So you peel back the, the outer layer of the onion and you get to what's called pranamaya kosha. And pranamaya kosha is what's called the energy body. So it's the pulsation of the blood, of lymph, the movement of the breath through the body. So it's all those more subtle channels that ha happen within the body that kind of animate the body. Then the layer underneath that is manomaya kosha. Manomaya kosha has everything to do with what is happening up here in the mind. All of those manifestations of, you know, like different types of thoughts, beliefs, thinking about the past and the future, you know, getting really clingy about some things and, and being really averse to other things feelings, emotions. So all that mental stuff, all that mental content is the next layer toward the center called manomaya kosha. You come a little bit beneath that and we get to vinyana maya kosha, which is translates as like the wisdom body. And this is akin to states that you come into in more deep sleep. So it's like pure intelligence, pure wisdom, pure, pure consciousness, um, kind of like the layer moving toward this pure awareness, but kind of like the subconscious almost. Above that, we even have one more before we get to that kind of clear light awareness. And this is the Ananda Maya Kosha. The Ananda Maya Kosha is the bliss body. So even bliss can be a hindrance. Like, so the lesson is even bliss, connection to joy, clinging to joy and bliss can be a hindrance to experiencing that kind of open awareness, that connection with maybe you might even say oneness or wholeness. And then at the very, very center, you peel back all those, la those layers and you get to that kind of pure conscious, that pure awareness. So, my question to, to all of you in kind of going through these different kosha layers, these different layers of being, is I wonder, are there any of these layers that feel like you have like a strong connection with or you have some challenges with? Like what, what is the relationship that you have with these different layers of being and, and how, how might you kind of be engaged with further acceptance of those layers and opening up to like moving through them and moving towards the pure awareness. I'll add one little piece is that kind of my interpretation as I kind of gravitate toward um, the interpretations of these koshas from a point of like integrating these in to create the whole of that pure consciousness so it's not like an extractive like let's get rid of all of that 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 excess stuff it's like let's recognize it and integrate it into the fact that like no this is just a part of the whole thing this is just a part of the whole thing and then once we integrate those in then we can kind of say like oh no this is just more of that like it's just more of that and you are more of that, and I am more of that, and we are all more of that. Is this making sense? At least somewhat, kinda? Yeah, yeah, please. Yes, yeah, 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 nice. Yeah, yeah, good, good noticing, good noticing. Anybody else have a thought about like which, which of those layers feels like maybe a little bit more sticky and where do you kind of come into, into, yeah. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I feel like I'm, it's an interesting ordering that you put out there and yeah. it's kind of like, 
Um, and so it was a surprise to hear, you know, going from meat to what is the next one? It's sort of like it's the energy it's body, like pranamaya kosha. So it yeah, it's like I can sit, and if I quiet thoughts mm -hmm. enough or calm enough, I'll feel like kind of a pulsing, a sort of an energetic sure. sort of thing, like um, you know, just sort of a pulsation. Mm -hmm. And but it sounded like in the scheme that you put out there, that thought is sort of one layer inside right. that and yeah and it feels to me like like in my struggle is always like around that i'm just in this constant mental sort of thinking sort of place that um i would like to be able to integrate that in but it also totally. feels like that there's a kind of a a level of I don't know, kind of like pretense that sort of goes with it, which is like, I'll have thoughts saying, oh, you're there, you're at, this is the thing, you know, and I'll yeah. sort of like, but I recognize that as just, well, that's just, you know, right. that's just one of those things that I'm sort of like, whatever, whatever is inside of me is trying to sort of anticipate and control right. this journey as opposed to sort of being open and discovering it. So, so it feels like that, that I get tangled up in, in that, layer about thinking and all of that mental activity and then when that's quiet enough i do feel like kind of a pulsing sort of non-verbal totally experience of of um yeah totally yeah yeah that's as deep as i get actually <laughs> hey you know what that's that is a wonderful question and i'm so glad that you brought that up because these layers are not like models are imperfect right any model that you use is imperfect so this is a model that helps to kind of describe the different layers of experience and kind of how you might get toward more pure consciousness but they all correspond with one another and talk to one another um, even within the yogic tradition if you're working with more of the body if you're working with breathing exercises if you're working with chanting um, you know, your consciousness is looking at that. So there's always going to be some mind activity focusing on that and turning toward that. And a lot of the, the process is kind of quieting the mind enough so that you can notice those outer layers, right? So it's not necessarily to say like, you need to become aware of the body so that you can be aware of the energetic body so that you can become aware of the thoughts. The thoughts are always there. We know this, right? We know this, but we can actively turn our mind, our attention, the focus of our attention on noticing the body, right? And we are embodied. We have this body in, in space. Um, you know, you could like, even make a case for putting the the mental part on the outer on the outer layer right i mean so like these models are as they are because that's how they they were described but you know in order to even do these practices like there has to be some conscious awareness focusing on these different levels of being so and as we know our minds they like to do all kinds of sorts of things they like to go all different places so um part of it is quieting the mind enough so that we can focus on all of these all of these layers so i would say like that's a very common experience yeah and they all talk to each other anybody else have a thought about which of these layers is trickier to kind of to be in connection with or ones that you feel really connected with i want to know about that too I, I, for me, I feel like the, what you were just talking about, that these layers yeah. are fluid. Yeah. And so, you know, some days uh, mental clarity is it's not in the way, but the physical um, is in the way. And that's like, I can't get beyond that. Right. right? Or other days if I feel great and the physical is not in, in anywhere present. Yeah. Um, it's probably, the, you know, um, not one of the first layers that I have to get through. But, um, I say for me, that's just it. It's like depends on how the physical body for me from my everyday feels is what allows me to go to move beyond these layers. Right. And I realize that on good days or days that you know I don't experience pain, mm -hmm. it's um, it's quite easier. On yeah. days that I do have pain, and that obviously the the physical gets um, sticky. Yes. Um, then the, uh, the other question I question I had is, um, 
the energetic layer yes of the body is that the same as what some people call the chi body yeah yeah, yeah, it's going to be very similar to that. So so what they call, talk about in like Qigong and the, and the Qi, the Qi energy, like those Chinese traditions are going to be talking about the same energy. I would also put within that category. So if you think about all of the meridians, there's a um, there's a tr kind of there's something in yogic philosophy that's very similar. They're called nadis, and they're all the energetic channels that move throughout the body. So this this includes like what I would say from a kind of merely anatomical perspective. They're talking about the like the nervous system and how it innervates our entire body. They're talking about all of the blood and lymph and how that energizes the body. They're talking about the breath and how that moves through the body. So how do how are we animated and how do we become alive from more kind of like an electrical sort of perspective? Like how how do all the mechanisms like actually get fueled up and, and work? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. And thank you for for bringing that into the conversation of like, when we have physical pain or things that are coming, I think that that can kind of speak back to this first question is sometimes the mind gets really sticky. And some of us have more of a propensity to be stuck in like the mental stuff. But some of us like if we have physical pain or physical discomfort, maybe we get more stuck there and don't have as much access. So it's going to be a little bit different every day for every person. And every every person is going to have a different constellation of experience with it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I've been really fortunate in that um, my physical body's pretty comfortable for most of my life. Wonderful. There have been periods of times when I've suffered injuries or I've had, you know, um, illnesses, of course, and stuff like that, and, it, and it, it becomes the obstacle. But for the most part, my, my physical body is, um, is handled on a day-to-day -day basis so that I can, but I get lost in thought yeah. and, um, and sort of like just discursive inner conversation. Because yeah. I have, since I can remember, I've been, tr been really, really, really obsessed with what's going on. Yeah. What's going on right now? What's going on right now? What's happening in this room? What's happening with these people? What's happening in this situation over here? What's happening with, you know, with me and how I feel mm -hmm. and how the conversation is going on and, you know, what's, go what's happening? Because yeah. I, and I think a lot of that was the fact that I was the youngest of five kids. So when I came into the world, it was all going on all yeah. around me in this, yeah. you know, in this house. And it was, it was bopping. Yeah. And I was like, just sort of, sort of, you know, inundated with stimulus and information and conversation and music and art and people's emotions and people's thoughts and needs and wants and desires da, 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 and my own mm -hmm. as well in that mix. So it was, it's, it remains this, um, is real focus for me. Yeah. And there are times that I realize that <clears throat> I'm way too caught up in that. Mm -hmm. And I have to relax and just sort of let that be yeah. without <clears throat> needing to know what's going on all the time. Yeah. And um and I had some experiences with when I was a young man that were really revelatory in sure. in that sense that yeah you really really relaxing around that need to know what's going on would be a real benefit to you right. in general and um so i keep that in mind on a day-to-day -day basis and my meditation practice really helps with that yeah and I have certain physical activities that are that, that are longstanding and that that give me a lot of joy and pleasure and and um, 
transcend that activity of the mind and puts me in touch with that more subtle body, the energetic. Sure. Body. And at times, that the, the flow of that can become um, transcended into even a, a deeper experience, but very briefly, mm -hmm. very briefly, mm -hmm. very briefly. And sometimes the aftermath of that can, can be really um, the relaxing after that, that activity um, can be very expansive. Sure. Is the best way Expect to that. Put yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's like you said, there's, there's no separating the layers. There, totally. For me, at least, there's a, a, a flow mm -hmm. between them that, um, that, that works together. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very, very well put. And thank you for, for your courage in sharing all of that as well. Um, I think that, you know, we can all relate to that, is that we have this kind of fluidity and we have these places that we get stuck and we have, you know, these tendencies, these kinds of deep, deeply grooved kind of patterns or habits that we keep on coming back to. And, you know, it's especially tricky when they're they're formed in, in our early years too. And it's the environment that we're growing up in. And if it feels like chaotic and like lots of things are coming on, you kind of have to like find your own little space in order to kind of feel a part of it, feel maybe even safe. Um, then, then that can kind of show up again and again in our lives. And, you know, part of what we're doing in just even you, you saying that out loud and doing the practice is interrupting that pattern, right? And so our only job in this practice is to notice how these layers are showing up and which ones are more prominent and to, to say like, okay, well, I'm going to intentionally choose to be accepting of this and to, to maybe move in a little bit different direction or just feel a little bit less sticky around this. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really beautifully articulated and we're all going to have our own tendencies and proclivities and working with, with the stuff that we've got. And the interesting thing is, and um, I'll move on to a practice after this, but a practice going through these layers. The interesting thing is not only do we have all of those different layers that we are working on integrating within ourselves, that if we're moving toward more this kind of like pure conscious, um, pure consciousness, pure awareness, is that the project is not just doing that in ourselves, but we need to do it in ourselves to be able to, to recognize like all of the different experiences and different people that we can be in relationship with, how we can be in relationship with nature, how we can be in relationship with other beings. So it is this process of integrating this to integrate this to integrate this to integrate all of what this kind of conscious like life experience is. It's, um, you know, it's kind of a lifelong project, as I might say, <laughs> right? It's like at least at least one lifelong project, right? <laughs> and maybe many lifelong projects. Um, so unless there's something else that's really burning um, for, for someone to share, I think I would love to guide you on a practice um, going through these layers. How does everyone feel, feel about that? Okay, so this is um, a meditation practice um, that comes from the tradition of I rest. It's based in yogic um, meditation. So it's um, developed by Richard Miller and will really in intently go through all of these different layers of perception. And um, my invitation is to, to simply be in kind of awareness and relationship with it, just the way that we've been in conversation. Um, now, I also want to say before we go into practice, you can choose a different position to sit in. If you decide you want to sit on the floor or even lie down or stand up, you can do that. If you at any point in time need to shift your position or you want to sway from side to side, sometimes I like to sway from side to side gently like this, maybe even try it with me, just a little bit of swaying side to side. Sometimes that can just really keep you in the practice rather than having you just like, that's when the body becomes sticky, 
like right so you maybe can or maybe the energetic body becomes sticky like the energetic pulsing so just know that that's available to you so come into your chosen position this process is also very similar to yoga nidra so it's aiming at coming into deep awareness deep relaxation okay so once in that position i invite you to either close your eyes completely or to soften your gaze simply begin to open up to your senses noticing any sounds that you're aware of in this moment maybe even smells or tastes noticing the contact that you have with the surfaces that you're touching And as you notice these things, simply coming into a gentle awareness of your breath. Feeling the subtle movements in your body with your breath. Often called your life force. one of the things that brings life. And to begin the process of this practice, we'll go through many phases. And the first is to identify something that you feel is your heartfelt desire in this life. Something that you might call your why it might be why for the work that you do, the person you want to be. What is, what is a big heartfelt desire in your life? It could be something really specific, like a particular type of work. Or it could be something broad, like I just want to be kind and I want to show up with kindness. So bringing that into focus and allowing that to expand, become a part of you. And I invite you to make an intention for this practice. It might be an intention that's connected with this heartfelt desire. How would you like this practice to help you to become more connected with that heartfelt desire? It could just be, I just want to I just want to be present for this practice. It's a great intention. And next, I invite you to connect with something that can serve as an anchor or a resource. And this can be a place in your body that feels calm. It could be a person or a pet that feels really calming and grounding. It could be a place in nature that feels deeply calming. So thinking of one thing that can be a resource or an anchor in this practice. Place in your body, a person or pet, or a place in nature. And with this resource, this is a place you can come back to 
any time you need in the rest of practice. Next part of practice is moving through the body, Anamaya Kosha. We'll be doing a full body scan, so know that if at any point in time you want to go back to the anchor, the resource, that's really skillful. And begin by noticing sensations arising in your jaw the hinges of your jaw. Moving to your lips, teeth, gums, and mouth. Just noticing sensation. Gently bring your awareness to your ears starting with your inner ears, middle ears, and outer ears. I invite you to move to your nostrils. And feeling the sensations of breath as it comes in and out of your nose. Very gentle, subtle sensations of breath. I invite you to bring your awareness to just your left eye. Coming around your eye to your left eyebrow temple, and cheekbone, and your left eye, including your eye and all of the space around your eye as pure sensation. Gently moving to your right eye. And your right eyebrow, temple, cheekbone, and then back to your right eye itself. Feeling the whole space around your right eye and your eye together. Invite you to open your awareness to both eyes in the space surrounding your eyes. Experiencing them as pure sensation. Giving up thinking. Just noticing sensation. And gently move up through your forehead the crown of your head, the back of your head and space behind your ears. Space where your head meets the top of your neck. Maybe creating a little bit more space there and noticing sensation. Moving down through your neck and throat and to your left shoulder, your left upper arm and forearm, wrist, palm and fingers. And feeling perhaps warmth in your palm feeling each finger and feeling your left hand fingers and your entire arm at the same time 
riding the waves of sensation. Moving to your right shoulder, upper arm, forearm, wrist, palm, and fingers. Allowing your awareness to settle on your right palm, noticing warmth or coolness, noticing all five fingers. including your hand and fingers, and your entire right arm in your awareness. Noticing all of the sensation. Now bringing both arms and hands into your awareness at the same time. Just sensation, giving up thinking. I invite you to bring your awareness into your torso, including front and back, left and right, inside, and outside. Noticing all of the activity. Noticing where there's stillness. Just sensation. Moving to your pelvis and pelvic floor. If you're sitting your seat. Moving to your left hip, left upper leg, knee, lower leg, ankle, foot, and toes. Feeling your left foot and your entire left leg and hip. And moving to your right hip. Your right upper leg. Knee. Lower leg. Ankle. Foot. And toes. bringing your foot and entire right leg into awareness. Expanding to notice sensations arising in both feet and legs at the same time. Noticing tension or freedom, openness, Noticing warmth and coolness. Bringing awareness of both legs and including now awareness of your torso, of both arms and hands. Expanding your awareness to include your neck, your head, and your face, space behind your eyes and nose and mouth. Until you're experiencing your entire body as a radiant field of sensation all of the interplay. All of the variety. All of the beauty. Just sensation. Keep
keeping this layer in your consciousness, but in the background, I invite you to move to an awareness of your breathing. Breathing as a manifestation of the energy that moves through your body. Inhaling and exhaling. And for noticing of the breath, we'll simply count up to 10 breaths. On each exhale, you'll simply say inside your head, one. And then on the next exhale, two. If you lose the count, it's okay. You just simply come back to one and start again. And we're just using numbers to continue to bring our attention back to breathing. If you haven't started, start now. I'll come in from time to time and I'll tell you when we're moving to the next piece. Continuing breathing. The feeling of the breath breathing you. It's a boat riding on the gentle waves of breath. Wherever you are in the count, allowing the awareness of the breath to, just like the awareness of the body, to fade into the background. I invite you to move your attention to any feelings or emotional content that you're aware of in this moment. Keeping in mind that if anything arises that feels like a bit too much, you can always go back to your resource or anchor. You could go back to the breath. If you're able, noticing any emotional content that might be present. And also expanding to notice any mental activity, any thoughts or beliefs. Might come in the form of thinking of something that happened in the past or planning for the future. And the thought can even take the form of, oh, I'm not really thinking a lot right now. So what is happening in the mind? Again, integrating and knowing that this is also a part, a layer of who we are and letting that fade into the background. Now intentionally 
opening up awareness to perhaps take a bit more of a bird's eye view, maybe just a slight distance from your body, from you here. Not quite a bird's eye view, but just getting a little bit of distance as you expand your awareness of yourself. Merging into more of a kind of subconscious state, to the degree that you can connect with that. Just noticing what it feels like to maybe give yourself a little bit more space around all of the awareness of the body, the breath, any mental activities. And I invite you to connect with one thing that gives you a sense of happiness or joy or even bliss. Might even be connected to the resource that you identified at the beginning of our practice. It's connecting with what brings you joy. Noticing what it feels like to be in connection with that. Perhaps even noticing what's happening in the other layers of being, the other layers of consciousness, the body, sensation, breath, the mind. And from this place of connecting with bliss or joy, expanding one time further to see if you can now take that bird's eye view, really integrating and seeing all of the layers of you, but Maybe seeing it with a slightly different perspective. And seeing it as a part of something vast. Merging in a way with a kind of pure awareness, becoming pure consciousness, pure awareness. To the degree that you can, tapping into what that might feel like. Allowing yourself to linger there for a few moments longer. And as we begin to come back, the rest of the layers of being, taking a moment to reconnect with 
our heartfelt desire. What was the thing that you connected with your why, heartfelt desire? Reconnecting with your intention for this practice. And also in Sanskrit called Sankalpa. Maybe taking one more moment to connect again with a sense of what brought you joy or bliss. Taking a few more moments, maybe a couple more breaths, I invite you to very gradually think about bringing the practice to an end. And if your eyes have been closed for the practice, I invite you to very slowly, like heavy curtains, begin to open your eyes, your eyelids. It's beginning to let the light filter back in. And as we've been again, traversing different layers of being now coming back into the body. So allowing yourself to stretch if the body needs it, to shift positions. Can also be really helpful to even look around that helps to reorient to being in eyes open sort of consciousness. All right. So we went on quite a journey together. <laughs> traversing all the different layers of consciousness. And if you've never done an eye rest practice before, this is kind of typically the, the protocol. It's led different ways with different language, but the, the whole idea is to kind of peel back those layers and understand ourselves from all of these different vantage points so that we can have a more complete understanding of who we are um, and can kind of integrate them and come into this more full and kind of wise understanding of who we are and how we're connected with that more pure awareness. Um, so I guess my question for you is, did you notice anything else having gone through this practice with the different layers of being? What, what came up for you? Were there different things, were there things that surprised you? Were there different layers that were there layers that you thought were going to be kind of sticky and you would get wrapped up in and weren't? Um, or were there things that were predictable? Does anybody have anything to share? I want to leave a little bit of time for that if you'd like. It also be, I felt it. And also like after practice, we're you know, still kind of in that, that state too. So take your time. Um, it could also be, I felt it hard to connect with that more like pure, pure awareness state. What felt interesting? Yes, please. Um, it's interesting how it, at some point it just feels like the very different layers just blend mm -hmm. away and it's a very, I guess you can say like a very thin layer of just like, I guess the in-between, the in-between, yeah. if that makes sense. Like I, yeah. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah. And then um, 
for me personally, I was very surprised how um, how easy I slip into like a very relaxed state. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, usually when I'm uncomfortable, it's you know it's this distraction. But I was like, wow, it's just like yeah. It was very nice. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Yeah. Um, I can relate to that. And I think that especially when you tend to like hold stuff in the body, this practice is especially, especially helpful. I'm, I'm one of those two. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Thank you. That was lovely. Thank you. Um, Yes, I, I just I want to share this uh, that um, that I, I missed part of that. Mm. And it wasn't that I fell asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, I didn't snooze. Um, uh, pranayama. What, what what is the word? Pranayama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the energy body. When we when we got there, um, I. I, I, I found I got my I got a little lost and mm. I and I missed wisdom body. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 Okay. I came back uh, online for bliss body. Okay. Right? Okay. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. <laughs> which was which was right when uh, so and 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 then you know and 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 I was forming the thought of sound music mm. just as the bells you know, started beautiful you know, in that in that place. But yeah, you know, I, I just wanted just, you know, to just state that that I that that happens, I, I can and, and I don't know if it's, you know, dullness versus vivid vividness. It's it's yeah. it's but it's um, yeah, I can I can disappear mm -hmm. for a while. And mm -hmm. then and but when we got to bliss body, it was, it was a very beautiful place. I mean, it was, yeah. it was yeah. Yeah. Was, so so as I um as I became aware of what was going on again, I, it was it was very awesome. enjoyable. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But wonderful. but yeah, I, I don't know what you said about wisdom, buddy. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> thank that's you. thank you so much for sharing. And that's not uncommon. That's that's really not uncommon. It's how it's how our mind works, it's how consciousness works. And you know, part of I actually like hearing that because part of the intent of this particular way of practicing is to allow you to drop the layers and go to that more kind of subconscious and maybe even pure awareness state, which it sounds like you went there for a little bit, a little bit earlier than, than when we were getting there. So that's the actual aim of the practice. Um, you know, the yogis have a really interesting and, and, you know, in the Buddhist tradition, they, they have, this kind of sentiment around it too, is that like you apply what is needed to get to the place. If it's, if all the layers aren't always needed, then, then fantastic, right? Um, so thinking about from the context of the Yoga Sutras, it starts by saying, and now we practice yoga, right? And the first lesson is, and the goal of yoga is to get to Samadhi, to get to like this pure consciousness. And then it starts to go through all of the different ways that you can get to samadhi. And so it's like, if you can just get there, then just practice samadhi, right? If that's not working, then do this practice. Will that practice still not working, then do this practice. So the approach is to kind of peel back these layers and like, okay, well, if this is this is tricky, then then we'll apply this practice. If this is tricky, we'll apply this practice. But if you can just get there and you get there more naturally, relish that, savor it, right? So so that would be my my recommendation for you is that for this particular practice, that's the that's the aim. So if you get there and you come back at Bliss Body, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Anyone else want to share anything? Yeah. I love also that there was um, a talk of like music arising too. 
So if there's nothing else that anybody would like to share, um, that is where we're going to be moving moving next is that um, part of how we can awaken these deeper states of consciousness, this kind of pure awareness is also done through things that are artistic or creative and kind of open us up to this, this kind of awe, right? Part of what can open us up to like this feeling that we're a part of this vast something, like that we're a part of something greater, are actually creative experiences. Has anybody ever, you know, experienced listening to a piece of music, any type of music, and that's brought you into these this state of like, oh my gosh, this is like, <laughs> I'm I'm part of something like really big here. Like this is astounding. This is astounding um, that I'm experiencing this right now. Anybody ever experienced that when in nature? like seeing a beautiful scene in nature, right? So we have these little short micro practices and other things that we can do to get there. Um, and you know, different meditation practices are also a part of how we can get there and how we can train our minds to be able to more reliably get there. Um, but it's part of the reason why within a lot of traditions, there are chants or mantras, you're using sound, you're using rhythm to be able to collectively kind of get into this entrained state of moving us toward the collective, of creating that kind of sense of awe and that vastness. So our practice, our last practice together is going to be a musical practice, but it's just a listening practice, right? So it's going to be a listening practice. I'm going to grab my harmonium. This is a, a song, I'll call it a song, that, that I wrote. The lyrics are about what it's like to feel and connect with that sort of expansive state. Um, in physics, they call this plenum. So, so the idea of plenum, like everything is complete, is saturated, it's full, like it's like the, the water bottle, like it doesn't have an ounce of space for more water, like it is complete, it is full, it is fully saturated and being that full saturation of awareness and of being. Um, and, you know, that's what I think about when I think about really like when I've tapped into and touched into those states, it just like feels like, yeah and everything is whole, everything is here, everything is as it should be. Um, and so this is, this is plenum. The song is plenum. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to share before we move into this last, last piece? I wanna make sure that I leave plenty of space for it. No? You're all ready to do the, the last practice. You're like, you sold it on a, <laughs> you sold us on it. And now, now we just want to do it. Okay, great. So my invitation is the same as for our seated or standing practices. You sit, lie down, stand, shift your position however you would like so that you feel at least as much comfort, stillness as is possible. And give me a moment to get my harmonium out. Yeah, yeah, please. And your eyes can be closed, or you can simply soften your gaze, finding a bit of stillness through your body, arriving here on this day. You as a part of that pure consciousness, we are all that. In yoga, they call that tat tvam asi. I am that, you are that, we are all that. Mm -hmm.
as it filters through, reveals the truth of existence. When I slaughter. It speaks to my soul. I feel the beauty of the universe. We live in a planet. No, we are not broken. Please open up. Please open eyes. We are alive. We are light. We are whole. We Separation is an illusion. So turn to each other we live in a planet no we are not broken please open eyes please open
We live, we live in a plenum and we are whole. Tat, tvam, asi. We are that. I am that. You are that. We are whole. Taking your time with this transition allowing the sa sounds to land as they continue to reverberate. If your eyes have been closed, I invite you to begin to open them slowly and gradually. Maybe shifting your position, taking all the time you need with all of this. So, we have a couple more minutes if anybody has any questions or if anybody would like to share anything after our, our listening practice, our musical practice. And I'm just feeling really, really full and really grateful to be here with all of you that we are that, that we are part of this great something. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Because we need all of us. <laughs> we need all of our beauty and intelligence and gifts. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. To all of you online, the, the offer stands too. If you have any questions or if you would like to, like to say anything, we'd love to hear from you if you want. We do have a little bit of time, but thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for joining. It's been an honor and a pleasure.